In this mini tutorial we're going to look a bit more at nucleophilic attack. A nucleophilic attack involves two species. We have an electron rich nucleophile and an electron poor electrophile. We need both of those species to come together for nucleophilic attack to occur. So an electron rich uh, nucleophile is often characterized by there being at least one non-bonding pair of electrons present. So for example, one example is the hydroxide ion that has one, two, three non-bonding pairs. Equally, the chloride ion is the same that also has three non-bonding pairs. And even a molecule like water has two non-bonding pairs there on the on the oxygen. Electrophiles, on the other hand, are electron poor and they're often characterized by there being a positive charge or at least a region of partial positive charge. For example, if we take the polar molecule that I'm drawing here, so we've got a carbon with three hydrogens attached and that carbon is then joined to bromine. The bromine is much more electronegative than the carbon so you see the bromine withdrawing electrons, so that develops a partial negative charge with the carbon then developing a partial positive charge. And it's this partial positive charge that is attractive to a nucleophile. And we often see nucleophilic attack um, associated with heterolytic bond cleavage. So heterolytic bond cleavage is um, characterized by the complete transfer of a pair of valence electrons to one of two nucleuses that had been previously joined by a covalent bond. So in the case of hydrogen bromide for example, when that HBr bond is broken, the valence electrons are completely transferred to the bromine nucleus, so the more electronegative of the two. So during nucleophilic attack, let's imagine we've got HBr again. So first of all, we see the bromine withdrawing the electrons from that bond. And let's imagine then that we've got an incoming nucleophile. So let's use the OH minus nucleophile there. So we see electrons being withdrawn from the bond to the more electronegative species. But then we see the nucleophile donating a pair of valence electrons to the more positive region there. As a result we see a new OH bond being formed to give us water with the previous HBr bond having been broken. And notice how we're using curly arrows here, full curly arrows, to denote the movement of a pair of valence electrons. So a pair of valence electrons move when this covalent bond is heterolytically cleaved and a pair of valence electrons is moving from the nucleophile to be shared with this electrophilic region.